Welcome to the Center for Spiritual Living in Southeast Louisiana. I'm Reverend Larry Marie Heil, the spiritual director here. And we are a group of radically inclusive spiritual renegades, healing hearts and creating community. And we embrace conscious spiritual living, encouraging everyone to live in enthusiastic expectancy of their abundance and their good. And this week, we continue our remarkable 2023 journey and our series on This Thing Called You with our message, Mirror, Mirror of My Thoughts. Today, we're learning to recognize our lives as a reflection of our thoughts and truly know that what we think about, we bring about. And Gary Lynn Floyd is here with us, bringing us wonderful songs to support the message. So stay with us and enjoy the journey as we learn to be aware of what we're thinking. And by the way, I know you know that Tuesday is Mardi Gras, so happy Mardi Gras. Let's begin with prayer. We take a deep, nourishing breath. We know that God is love and joy and comfort and ease and safety and fun and laughter and happiness. And we are all that the divine is within us, is all that essence of love and kindness, wisdom, intelligence. And what I know to be the truth today is that we are each here by divine appointment to hear something in this mirror of our thoughts message, either from a quote maybe in the music, maybe in the message, maybe all of the above. But there is a reason that we have chosen to be here, that we are giving of our time today to listen to this message so that we can hear something that brings us even closer to that divine being that lives within us and to expressing it daily on this planet. Hmm. So I am grateful. I'm grateful that we're here together. I'm grateful that I know that the God without is the God within each of us and that that God is guiding us on our way. So it's from that gratitude that I release my words into the law of mind, spirit, and action, knowing that they're already done, that the answer is already yes. So I can let it be. I say amen. And let's affirm it together. And so it is. Hmm. And Gary has a great song to begin our music today for the message. It's easy to have loving thoughts when we sing about I Rise. Good morning, Southeast Louisiana Center for Spiritual Living. Lynn Floyd with you again this morning. I got a brand new song for you to start out today. Let's sing it. With a burst of energy, I rise to greet the world. With a burst of energy, I rise to greet the world. Sing that with me. With a burst of energy, I rise to greet the world. With a burst of energy, I rise to greet the world. Second part goes, I rise with a burst of energy. of energy I rise I rise back to the top here we go with a burst of energy I rise to greet the world with a burst of energy I rise to greet the world sing that again with a burst of energy I rise to greet the world one more time with a burst of energy I rise to greet the world I rise rise with a burst of energy I rise I rise sing that again I rise with a burst of energy I rise I rise last line here we go I rise I rise one more time I rise I rise 
to sound great. So this is our time for celebration and healing. Our time in our service where we celebrate life and we pray for people who desire prayer. We begin with celebration. So I invite you to say aloud so that the whole universe can hear it. Any event in your life for which you're grateful and joyful this week. And now we turn to the healing portion of our service. We're a community steeped in healing. So we pause now to pray for anyone who's not feeling the joy of life that we perhaps were just feeling. They're not feeling maybe that they have things to celebrate. And I truly love this part of our service because it's so in alignment with who we are. So let's pray. God is all there is. God is that love and that peace and ease and grace and freedom and so much more. And as an individual expression of the divine, each of us have within us all of these qualities of spirit. They're available to us right here and right now. And what I know to be the truth is that there are people on this planet right now that aren't embracing those qualities. So we stop for a moment and we create a circle of love. And in this community, we place in that circle of love anyone that we recognize within ourselves or for someone else that might need prayer. So I'm gonna pause and I just invite you to say aloud the names of all of those people that you wanna include in our circle of love. I know that God is right where each of us happens to be, right here and right now, moving in through and as each of us. And I know that the divine has heard every name that we spoke, either in our hearts or aloud. And what I'd like you to do now is pause again, and from your heart to all of theirs, just send out love, knowing that the divine knows exactly how to distribute it. And what I know to be the truth is that anything that needs to be released within each of these people is being released now, be it disease of the mind, of the body, of the soul. I know that anything that's seeking to come forth and be lifted up can be lifted up. And that this release and this lifting up is healing whatever's called to be healed. I know that each of these people is feeling more deeply their connection with the divine right now. I have evidence of that, and I know it to be the truth for everyone that we place in our circle. So I'm so grateful to know that the God without is the God within me. The God without is the God within every person in our circle, every person in this community, and every person on this planet. And I'm grateful for that power of community prayer and what it means to the uplifting of the people on this planet. So it's from all that gratitude that I release this prayer into the law of mind, spirit, and action. Because I know that the divine, in all of its wisdom, has already called all of this good. Any heavy lifting that needs to be done to heal whatever needs to be healed, the divine is already taken care of. So I can just know it's already done, say amen, and together we can affirm it. And so it is. I invite you to join me for our community affirmation. My life's purpose is already within me and I am committed to its unfoldment. I am here by divine appointment to join in a community that cares for one another, to be in a place that transforms people's lives, to remember the highest truth about myself to learn spiritual tools for personal transformation and thus to make the world a more joyful place. So this is our time for meditation, a time when we let go of the past and we forget about the future and we just live in this moment right here and right now. 
And today, I invite you to embrace the words of our meditation song. Allow Gary to take you into that place where you truly know how your thoughts impact your life. In his essay on self-reliance, Emerson said, we know that the ancestor of every action is thought. So when Gary pauses for meditation, just notice your actions this past week and what thoughts brought them about. Enjoy the song. It's called, Oh Great Spirit. And when Gary begins to play, uh, just allow that eternal goodness to flow through you like a flood. Great Spirit of love, giving freely, refusing none. Oh, Great Spirit of love, eternal goodness flows like a flood. Love is all, all is love. Join us in singing the music of all in one, one in all. No greater blessing neath moon or sun. Great Spirit of love, giving freely, refusing none. Oh, Great Spirit of love, eternal goodness flows like a flood. Love is all. Join us in singing the music of all in one, one in all. No greater blessing neath moon or sun. No greater blessing, oh great spirit. Neath moon or sun, oh great spirit, no greater blessing. My name is Nancy Wirtz, and today I'm reading from This Thing Called You by Ernest Holmes, Chapter 7. The mind principle around you is reacted to your thought. Its chief characteristic is its susceptibility to impression. It receives the slightest vibration of thought and acts upon it. 
since this law acts like a mirror, when you withdraw old images of thought and place new ones in front of this mind, this mirror of mind, the old reflections and conditions cease to exist and the new ones take their place. But if you only half withdraw the old images and only half create new ones, your experience will partake of the nature of both kinds of thoughts. Say, I am not concerned about what happened yesterday. I know that today everything is made new. I let go of all sense of limitation. I divorce my thought from any belief in lack. I repudiate the idea that I am poor, weak, sick, or unhappy. New conditions are being created for me, conditions of harmony, happiness, peace, and joy. All circumstances and situations are being harmonized. Wherever I go, I shall meet peace, joy, and happiness. Whatever I do shall be done with reason and intelligence. I shall be surrounded by friendship, by beauty, by right action. My whole being responds to this conviction. Simply with complete conviction, I accept my freedom. This music before the talk is a marvelous introduction because if we remember that we were always right where we were meant to be and all was in divine order, we can truly embrace that we are whole and complete just as we are and that our thoughts are perfect. Sing along with Gary as he sings, Perfect God, Perfect Being. Perfect God, perfect being, perfect one, perfect whole and complete, perfect love, perfect seeing, perfect God, perfect being. Perfect God, perfect being, perfect one, perfect whole and complete, perfect love, perfect seeing, perfect God, perfect being, perfect God, perfect Whole and complete, perfect God, perfect being, perfect one, perfect whole and complete, perfect love, perfect seeing, perfect God. I'd like to thank our reader, Nancy Wirtz, wasn't she adorable, for the wonderful reading today, and Gary Lynn Floyd, as well as our own CSL music team for the beautiful music. We're in week seven of our series, This Thing Called You, each week independent. 
We've covered a lot of ground so far. Living in joy, aiming for what we want, watching our thoughts, because it's done unto us as we believe. And the lesson this week is a great reminder to be aware of what we're thinking. We continue our 2023 Remarkable Journey and learn to watch what we think and be aware of those unconscious thoughts, the ones that perhaps we don't realize are directing our lives in a direction we'd rather not be taking. Our topic today, mirror, mirror of my thoughts. In Philippians 4, 8, we read, Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. So the question I have for you today is this. What is the one choice you can make today which allows you to think about the lovely, the admirable, the praiseworthy, and also recognize your thoughts or things and the things that you think about, you bring about? One more time. What is the one choice you can make today which allows you to think about the lovely, the admirable, the praiseworthy, and also recognize your thoughts or things and the things you think about, you bring about? We learn to realize today that our life is a mirror of our thoughts, be they conscious or unconscious ones. In our philosophy, where there's really no hell and no blame, we don't think about a damning power, but rather about a benevolent one, the one power of which we're all a part. As we said last week, I and the Father are one. Yet, how many of you still blame yourself when something goes wrong or when you make a mistake? Heavens, you're not perfect. You might remember reading this about a power that damns or about hell and the devil this week. We're reminded any belief in a power that damns or a hell that waits or any devil is false. There is no damnation, no judgment coming in or passing through me. There is justice, knowledge, right government, divine guidance without judgment. This does not mean that I accept lies or think that mistakes are as good as right actions. It merely means that divine intelligence operates through me without confusion. Calmly, forward, moving, progressive, upward, spiraling, outward, reaching, I am guided by infinite wisdom into that light which is eternal. So, just because there's no judgment, it doesn't mean we accept lies or think mistakes are as good as right action. It does mean that we let go of damning ourselves when we make a mistake. It does mean that we recognize in everything there is something we can learn and divine wisdom is guiding us. We're guided by infinite wisdom into the light. Remember that. So many of you know that I was with some friends this week from California and from Oregon. They were visiting in New Orleans for family Mardi Gras weekend. One morning, I was so upset and my thoughts were pretty angry ones, ones that definitely disturbed my own peace. And I let it bother me for a much longer time than I normally would have. I was upset that the way that I had planned things was not happening. Wow. I totally lost my ministerial self, my real self, my true self, and I let the events on the outside consume me. Blame? Oh, yeah. I was definitely blaming someone else for the events of the morning. 
I certainly forgot what Nancy read. Wherever I go, I shall meet peace, joy, and happiness. I was so far from that peace, joy, and happiness. When I finally dropped my guest off and took a breath, I realized how my thoughts had taken me down that rabbit hole of blame and how I allowed my thoughts to steal my peace. Let's be honest. We've all pointed the finger at someone else at some point in our lives, right? And where did it get you? I don't think to a peace of calm. I rather doubt that. As Emerson wrote in his Spiritual Laws essay, as a man thinketh, so is he. And as a man chooseth, so is he and so is nature. We don't escape who we are or what our thoughts bring about in our lives. Start blaming others and notice that peace and calm fly right out of that window. I love what Dr. Joseph Murphy wrote in The Power of Subconscious Mind. You are living in a fathomless sea of infinite riches. Your subconscious is very sensitive to your thoughts. Your thoughts form a mold or matrix through which the infinite intelligence, wisdom, vital forces, and energies of your subconscious flow. So how do we start living consistently without blame? And from that place, where we know our thoughts are powerful. Begin by believing what you think about, you bring about. Because I certainly brought about some uncomfortable moments in my life last week. If you read chapter seven, you might remember that Dr. Holmes said that having the consciousness that God is in everything enables us to see perfection and harmony in people and in affairs. Our topic is mirror, mirror of my thoughts. Remember the witch? Mirror, mirror on the wall, who's the fairest of them all? Why do you think she saw the pretty young girl? Because deep down she believed she was not the fairest. We all do the same thing a lot of the time. Ever say, oh, I'm getting so old, or I'm so clumsy, or whatever it might be. Starting a sentence with I am is asking the universe to sit up and pay attention to what you're saying and make certain that you get it. Or how about this one? My poor aching body, knee, back, hip, feet. It keeps me from doing whatever. Again, what are you affirming? This is not to say that we ignore pain and don't focus on it. Stop focusing on what you don't want. Focus on what is possible. The perfect health that you are. The abundant being that you are. The graceful person that you are the ageless soul that you are. How we use the law of life, our individual use of it, is our creativity. Think about this. If we believe there is but one life and that everything is a part of that one life is available to us right now, wow, what do you think we might do? What if every word we spoke, yes, absolutely every word we spoke, we considered that we were looking into a mirror and exactly what we spoke was coming directly and immediately back to us. Duh, it is. In the reading today, you heard, since this law acts like a mirror, when you withdraw old images of thought and place new ones in front of this mind, this mirror of mind, the old reflections and conditions cease to exist and the new ones take their places. I love what Holmes 
said about this in a related reading in a Science of Mind magazine back in August of 71. He relates this to us being broadcasting stations. It's fascinating to think that we are both mental broadcasting stations and receiving sets. And it will be even more wonderful when we learn to broadcast only the kind of messages that we wish to have returned to us. This is one of the secrets of life. Now that's one of the secrets of life that we each need to be embracing, especially since it's not really a secret. Might you be able to believe that you're a broadcasting station and also guided by infinite wisdom? In Lesson 42 of The Course in Miracles, there's this line that says, you cannot but be in the right place at the right time. Wow. We cannot but be in the right place at the right time. Can you imagine what believing that would do to our thoughts of self-doubt or self-blame or self-shame? Holmes put it this way in our chapter for this week. Believe that you are governed by divine intelligence, that you are directed by divine guidance. Know that everything you say, think, or do that is constructive is done through divine authority. Hey, sometimes I doubt that. It seems like I do silly things or make mistakes that I know better than to make. I was caught a while back by the Drug Enforcement Act scam. And when I finally realized it was a scam, I felt really stupid and upset I wasted over an hour of my time worrying. I say often, in every way, things are in divine order. And yet sometimes that's difficult to accept, especially when things appear to be going wrong. And sometimes even when they appear to be going right, I actually wonder if it's too good to be true. We have to develop our spiritual muscle to remember that we're not separate from the divine. The divine is moving in through and as us in every minute of every day and directing us to our good. We have to monitor our thoughts. In New Orleans this past week, even after I let that aggravation go, I kept thinking how silly it was of me to get upset and to complain. It's easy to fall into that trap and blame ourselves over something in the past. If it's in the past, Release it from your thoughts and replace it with something better. It's truly a spiritual practice to monitor our thoughts and those unconscious statements we're making to ourselves about ourselves or about others so that we can realize the truth. There is only one life. That life is God's life and that life is our life right here and right now. Think about this. If we're truly a part of the one life, then what are we waiting on to know the truth about who we are or what we're capable of becoming? Ralph Waldo Trim in Tune with the Infinite wrote this, thought is not, as is many times supposed, a mere indefinite abstraction or something of a like nature. It is, on the contrary, a vital, living force, the most vital, subtle, and irresistible force there is in the universe. So I would say that reminds us that it's our obligation to know when we place blame and shame and point the figure out there or even inwardly, we're forgetting the truth of who we are. We truly are a product of our thinking, not in the sense that we have no control over our life, but in the sense that we have all control over our life. It's about our thoughts. And we truly are guided by infinite wisdom 
always check it out. Notice your thoughts. Shift them when you're not being served by whatever it is you're thinking. Remember the mirror. It reflects back to you what you're thinking directly and exactly. It's done unto you as you believe. The divine presence can only do for us what it can do through us. And Ella Wheeler Wilcox in the Science of Mind magazine way back in 1943 wrote an article called All of Success Lies in You. Here's a few of her words of wisdom from that article. Thought is eternal in its effects, and every hopeful thought which enters the mind sets vibrations in motion which will help minds millions of miles distance and lives yet unborn. If we all believed that our hopeful thoughts helped minds that were millions of miles away or minds that were yet unborn, do you think we'd be more conscious of what we were thinking and make our thoughts a mirror of what it is we wanted to see in our lives and on this planet? I imagine we would. So in summary, how about you remember that your life is a mirror of your thoughts? Well, you could remind yourself that there is no power that damns. Blame and judgment come back to us. So let go of self-judgment and blame. Life is a reflection of our beliefs. Remember that God is in everything. It makes it a lot easier to see harmony and good. The law acts like a mirror, reflecting our thoughts, so stop believing in any limitations. We're guided by infinite wisdom. Everything is always in divine order. So listen up. You cannot but be in the right place at the right time. You always are right where you're meant to be. So here's your affirmation for the week. How is it I so easily and willingly make the choice today to think about the lovely, the admirable, the praiseworthy, and also recognize my thoughts are things, and the things I think about, I bring about. Your challenge for the week is this. Pause a few times every day and notice what you're thinking about. Perhaps even set an alarm on your phone to remind you to do that. And observe and notice if your thoughts are loving and kind. Remind yourself you're guided by infinite wisdom. And forgive yourself if those thoughts are not for the greater good of yourself or for others. Let's pray. We take a deep nourishing breath. Ah, we go within to that place where we know the divine, where we know that guide that guides us through this experience that we're having on this planet. Hmm. And what I know to be the truth is that we are each deciding right here and right now to incorporate the spiritual practice in our, in our lives that allow us to remember that right where we are, God is that everything truly is in divine order, that we truly cannot but be in the right place at the right time. It is so true that what we think about, we bring about. So I know that this week we are making an effort to think about those things that are praiseworthy and admirable and loving and kind and bringing those about. So I am grateful. I'm grateful for this time that we've had together. 
I'm grateful to know that I am indeed guided by infinite wisdom into that light of love. Hmm, so it's with great gratitude that I release these words into the law of mind, spirit, and action, knowing the truth that right where we are, God is, that we have asked and it's already been given. The answer is yes, unequivocally yes. So I can just say amen and we can affirm it together. And so it is. I thank everyone that continues to give of their time, their talent, their treasures, and allow this community to be prosperous and continue to be a part of their lives. Thank you very much. Enjoy our offertory song. The love of your spirit within me, I bless this gift. I send it forth to you, bless and prosper. It does good work in the world and returns to me, multiplied abundantly. From the love of your spirit within me, I bless this to heal, bless and prosper. It does a work in the world and returns to me, multiplied abundantly. And so it is, and so it is, and so it is. You can find all of the information for donating at our website at cslsoutheastla.org. You can use the donate button there or you can use Zella or Venmo at 225-287-8887. You can text your amount to 1-225-320-5100 or you can mail your donation to CSL Southeast Louisiana, care of Reverend Larry Marie Heil, 445 Magnolia Wood Avenue, Baton Rouge, Louisiana, 70808. We thank you for your tithes and donations, and we appreciate the fact that you are giving gifts that are flowing out to everyone we touch. And what a wonderful song to sum up the message today. Sing along with Gary as he reminds us that we are a perfect design and everything is fine. The song is called, Amen, Alleluia. I know you're going to love it. Amen, Alleluia. I hear the dream. Amen, Alleluia. I see the gleam of spirit within me. A perfect design doing all right everything's fine amen hallelujah i'll stand by you amen hallelujah i'll see you through the joy and the sorrow into the light shining on you everything's right Perfect design, doing all right.
right Everything's fine Amen Hallelujah I'll stand by you Amen Hallelujah I'll see you through The joy and the sorrow Into the light Shining on you Everything's right And next week, we continue our series of This Thing Called You with a message, Live in Joyous Expectancy. We learn to see good in everything we see and expect everything we do to prosper. So we live in joyous expectancy of our good. The chariot duo of Jesse and Amy return as our musicians, bringing us wonderful songs to support the message. So be sure to join us and learn to live in joyous expectancy. Thank you for joining us today. I invite you to like us on Facebook at Center for Spiritual Living, Southeast Louisiana. And please follow us on our YouTube channel at C-S-L-S-E-L-A. And it's just about time to join in our community time, which is a live discussion that follows the service every Sunday at 11.45 a.m. You have a little bit of time to go get a cup of coffee or some tea and then dial into our conference line. The number is 540-792-0192. And the participation code is 475-220. We hope you'll join us. So in closing, remember, Disney claims to be the happiest place on earth, but we at the Center for Spiritual Living know that we are absolutely the most joyful. So until we meet again, may you be wrapped in the arms of love and kindness, and may you remember that your life is a mirror of your thoughts, and you cannot be anywhere except in the right place at the right time. And what I know to be the truth is when we accept that we are guided by infinite wisdom at all times, we learn to live more conscious of our thoughts, and we also feel very much alive. Alive, alive, alive forevermore, my spirit is alive. Yeah.